Hello guys, in this video I'll introduce you into Genshin Impact, telling you how the game works. I'll make other guides as well, so in this video I won't go in the specific in some topic. First of all, Genshin Impact is an open world game with a stamina system, and this game is called Original Resign, gacha system and some co-op content. The most important is there are no PvP system, at least for now. During exploration or combat, you will control a squad built up with up to 4 characters. There are two rarity of characters, 4 star and 5 star. Of course, 5 star characters are stronger than 4 star, but that doesn't mean you can't play the game without 5 star characters. Most of 4 stars are really, really strong, so don't worry about that. Each character has his or her own statistics based on the level, weapon, artifacts, constellation, and talents. For the level, not that much to say, you can level up the character using her in the combat to gain EXP, but that gain the EXP is pretty low, so the main way to level up a character is using the EXP card. You can obtain an EXP card by opening chests around the world, completing missions, or just farm them at the lane line outcrop using original resign. It's pretty recommended to level up only your main or maybe two main characters to high level, the main DPS and not the entire squad to the equal level, or you will be stuck at some uh, stages uh, or levels. Normally, other characters are kept at uh, level 50, just for the elemental reaction, while the main DPS are more than 70 or 80. When a character reaches a certain level, just like level 20 or 40, you need to ascend them to increase the maximum level. Beside the main level, there are weapons. Each character has an archetype, and based on that archetype, they can use sword, claymore, Bow, Catalyst, and a Polyarm. Every weapon has a rarity from 1 star to 5 star, so of course, 5 star weapons are the strongest, but 4 star weapons are really good to progress, so you don't have to force to get a 5 star weapon. But uh, yeah, if you have, you can use it. You can get a weapon from Gacha, but some weapons are available to be crafted at the Blacksmith. 1 star and 2 star weapons doesn't have a secondary statistic and a special skill. From 3 star weapon or above, the weapon will have a secondary stat and a special skill, and those statistics are the same for the same name weapon. The same weapon can be used to increase the, re the refinement rank of the weapon, increasing the skill effect up to 5 times, so you need 6 of that weapon to maximize the skill, uh, skill's effect. Weapons have their own level system, and the higher level is the weapon, higher will be the main and the secondary statistic. And you can use the other weapons or using enhancement ores to level up. You can obtain those ores in the chest around the world, completing mission or crafting them at the blacksmith. Now we have artifacts, and you can consider them as a character's equipment. Every character can equip up to 5 artifacts at 5 different positions. Every artifact will have a main stat and some secondary stats. Between artifacts there are set bonus, that means when you equip two artifacts of that set or four artifacts of that set, you will activate the set bonus, and those set bonus are different for each set. Artifacts can be obtained opening chest from mission or from artifacts dungeons. I'll explain better about artifacts in another video, because there are a lot of things to say about them. Now we have the constellation, and to unlock them you need that character's Stella Fortuna, and to obtain those you have to find the same characters from the gacha, so it's basically the dupe. That means to have a full constellation character, you need to find that character 7 times. Increasing the constellation level, you will unlock extra effects, and it's different for every character. Now, some characters uh, are already strong even without constellation. Some will start to shine after certain level of constellation, but it uh, doesn't really really matter because uh, even if at the zero constellation you can still play that character, it's up to you about who to play. After constellation we have talents, and it's basically your skill level, such as normal attacks, elemental skill and elemental burst. You can level up those skills using materials and mora. As I said before about element reaction, beside the main character who has multiple elements, each character has his own element. In the game there are 7 elements, Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, Electro, Anemo, Geo and Dendro. You can combine elements to make element reaction, just like burning, frozing, electrocharged, overload, vaporize and much more to make extra damage or effects. I'll explain that better in the element reaction video. 
In this world, there are puzzles around the entire world that you can solve to get rewards, or chest that is guarded by some enemies, so you have to kill them to unlock the chest. There are dungeons and world bosses, and when you defeat them, you will get the materials for character ascend to increase the maximum level, or weapon ascend, or to increase the talent level. You also need the materials that can be farmed in some dungeons. For dungeons, you need the original resign to enter and challenge it. For bosses around the world, you can start to fight them, and only when you defeat them, uh, a blossom will grow from the ground. And to get the reward, you need to use the original resign to open it. So in short words, you need to farm, farm and farm to make your character stronger. But that is limited since you only have 120 of maximum original resign and it uh, restores um, one original sign every 8 minutes. So to refill uh, the entire bar of 120, it takes uh, 16 hours. So in a day, you have a uh, um, maximum 180 original sign to use in dungeons, uh, to farm leyline outcrop uh, and the bosses for weapon ascension material, talent level up materials and artifacts. But uh, don't farm those uh, before a certain level, and I will explain that in the artifact video. If you want, you can also restore them with the Primogem. You can restore the uh, original resign up to 6 times per day. For the first time, it costs 50 Primogems. Second time and the third, it will cost 100. Fourth time, it will cost 150. And for the last two, so fifth and sixth, it will cost 200 Primogems. So unless you're big whale, normally it's not recommended to restore uh, uh, original resign for free to play. For monthly card uh, and uh, battle pass player, um, it's uh, from uh, one or two times per day. And if you're whaling, but not that big uh, amount of whaling, uh, you can increase, uh, you can restore up to three times per day. And uh, since now I talked about Primo Gems, it's time to talk about uh, in-game currency. There are much type of currency. First of all, uh, we have the most precious one, Primo Gem. You can use them to buy Interwind Fate and Acquired Fate to pull, at the cost of 160 each one. Or use them to restore original sign, just like I said before. The easiest way to get them is directly purchase, buying uh, Genesis Crystal and exchanging them with the ratio of uh, one by one. Other ways to get uh, Primo Gems is completing Archon missions, story missions, world missions, daily missions, monthly card, opening chests around the world, and from a spiral abyss. Now we have a masterless stardust and a masterless star glitter. They are used to exchange some item in the shop. Let's talk from the masterless stardust. When you pull a 3 star weapon, you will obtain 15 of masterless stardust. About the Masterless Star Glitter, when you pull a 4 star weapon, you will get 2 of those star glitter, 10 for a 5 star weapon. When you get a dupe character, from the second time to the seventh time, it will give you 2 star glitter for a 4 star characters, and 10 for 5 star characters. From the 8th time dupe or above, it will give you 5 star glitter for 4 star characters and 25 for 5 star characters. After that, we have Mora. Mora is the most common currency in the game. You can consider them as a money in GTA. Everything you do will need Mora. Leveling up character, you need Mora. Leveling up weapons, you need Mora. Ascending characters and weapons, you need Mora. Increasing skill levels, you need Mora. You will always need Mora, especially in the late game. The amount of used Mora is really, really big. You can get Mora by opening chests around the world, completing missions, and farming them at a lane line outcrop, Blossom of Wealth. You can also buy them uh, from the Masterless Currency Shop if you want. Now we have element sigils. On each land there are different type of sigils. Anemo sigils for the Anemo land, Geo sigils for the Geo land, and so on, when they will release other lands. With those sigils you can buy some items at the sigil shop. An important item you should always buy at every land is the main character's constellation item. For the rest just buy whatever you need. You can obtain those element sigils just opening the chest. For example, if you open a chest in the Anemo land territory, uh, that chest will give you some uh, Anemo sigils. If you open a chest in the Geo land, uh, then that chest will give you some uh, Geo sigils. Beside the chest, you can also find them um, randomly in the world. So if you see something shine in, on the ground, on the water, just uh, go there and take. It maybe can give you some sigils. 
In the game, there is a cooking system as well. Using materials that you find around the world, you can cook dishes that can resource your HP, increasing your statistics for limited time, which is really good to eat before facing a strong boss. Now let's talk a really important thing, Adventure Rank and World Level. Adventure Rank is your account level. You can obtain experience by completing missions, opening chests and or spending original sign, with a ratio of one original sign for 5 XP. Sometimes a mission is locked until you reach the required level, so it's really important to increase your adventure level. That's why every time you see a chest around the world, go to open them. Same for the world quest, that uh, basically is the side quest. Same for characters and the weapon level, you need a certain adventure rank to unlock the possibility to increase the level, so for the ascension. Now we have uh, a world level. You will unlock world level 1 at level 20, world level 2 at level 25, world level 3 at level 30, and so on. Sometimes you need to pass an exam to increase the world level, sometimes it just increases by itself. Higher is your world level, strongest will be all enemies around in the world, including simple slimes, but their drop and the rewards will also increase, they will become stronger but the reward will be better. About the co-op system, you can join other person's world on invitation or by requesting it. Once you join his world, you can fight bosses and dungeons together. The reward will be the same for the entire party players. You can't open other players' world chests, and I guess that's normal, or you're basically stealing XP. Another important thing is don't let strangers come in your world and you let them mine your world minerals when you're not with him. Because if you're fighting a boss and he just uh, go around the world and mine the minerals, it's uh, really really bad for you. Because those minerals has uh, from 1 to 3 days to generate, and they are really important to create weapons XP items. And uh, another tip is, when you're in the party, if a person mine a mineral or a material, everyone can collect that item for one time. So if the party has four members, so four different players, that means all four can get a mineral when that is mined, but only if that player is near enough to that mineral at the moment it gets mined. I guess that's all, hope I made a good introducing video about the Genshin Impact and letting you know how the game works. Now I'll make other videos about gacha artifacts, how to use original sign properly to maximize the efficiency and much more guides. So rest tuned guys. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!